So this is the review of the Starboard Pro, the 2019 board, a complete new shape for this year, very different to the last few years. This is the 710 by 29 we're gonna be reviewing in the blue carbon construction. Just a word of warning, I might get a little bit geeky when I talk about some of the parts of this board, but it's definitely stuff that really needs to be highlighted because this is a performance surfs up. So because this is Starboard's full-on performance range of boards, there are quite a lot of boards in the range. The big volume board, 143 litered, right down to the ridiculously stupid volume of 66 litres, which only about three people in the world can paddle. But there are some new shapes, really more around the 710 size that a lot of people are looking at on the internet, and this is one of them. But bear in mind, there is gonna be a lot of things that you can transfer to the bigger boards and the smaller boards from this board review. So the full specifications of this board, seven foot 10 by 29, obviously we just said, four inches thick, brings the volume at 104 liters. It's a very light board, this one, the blue carbon, it's 6.3 kilos. And for that weight, you're gonna have to pay for it because it retails at 2,299 pounds. It comes as standard as a thruster, three fin box, but it also can be run as a quad as well. The board is made from its gold level verified construction, so it's got EPS foam cores. It's got armor form, which is basically made from recycled bottles, which wraps around the full deck and rail. Then you've got your carbon down the side of the rails. You've got flax rails. You've got a balsa, end grade balsa, which is on the bottom of the board, which gives it a great impact resistance. The blue color is all from a natural water-based product. And then it's finished off on the top with the recycled deck pad. Moving on to the features on this board this year, just said about the Crocodile recycled EVA deck pad. Very comfy, really nice, nice amount of grip. Absolutely fine there. Nice and full all the way to the pad there. Nice kicker at the tail, nice pad under your foot so you can feel that. And actually really like the way that the pad is set out and it's really well placed on the board. It's big old deep recessed carry handle. Absolutely fine, but then this board doesn't weigh anything anyway, so it's very, very light and easy to carry. Moving on to the shape of the board, looking at the outline shape this year, you can easily see there's a huge difference between the nose from last year's board, and that's pretty much the main difference that you'll see. There might be a very subtle change in the back shape here, but it's really to do with the nose shape. They've snubbed off the nose, made it into more of a diamond-shaped nose, by cutting the nose off the board and putting more of a diamond shaped nose on it like they have done here, it's gonna reduce the swing weight of the board so you're gonna be able to turn the board and pivot the board faster on the way. So the diamond shaped nose does make a difference to turning the board and making it quicker. It makes a difference for these size boards, 710 and below, but really the bigger change, you're gonna feel the difference is in the bigger size boards because they have lost a lot more nose weight so they're gonna be even faster to bring around and pivot on the turn. So just bear that in mind, the bigger boards will have a more of an effect with that nose change than the smaller boards would do. Talking about the rail shape this year, they said they have refined the rail shape, which they have, but they have done quite a lot more work near the back of the board because that rail shape is quite sharp. Gives you a lot more drive on the bottom turns and a lot more speed when you're shooting along the face. They've also done things with the channels which come into the rails, which we'll talk about in a minute. So turning the board over and looking at the bottom of the board, this is where the geek in me starts to come out. First off, you've got your blue carbon, which looks great. Balsa end grain right through the board. Blue tint, fantastic looking board. Very different to other boards in the market. Very natural, very just earthy. Looks really nice with the flax rails. So that's the look at the bottom of the board. But the actual shape of the board, first off, let's start with the rocker line, which is the curve from front to back. A nice amount of rocker up in the nose. They need that extra bit of rocker, obviously, because the nose has been cut off, so you've lost a bit of length. So a nice amount of rocker at the nose. It's generally a constant rocker. It's got a little bit of a flat section in the mid part of the board, which about that much there, which does help you generate quite a lot of speed, makes the board quite quick on a wave. And then moving to the back of the board, if I put the rocker over there, you can see it's still flattish about here, and then it tail kick kicks off there. Great for the turning maneuverability of the board. So looking at the board sideways now, let's look at the cross section of the board. So up at the front of the board, they put a concave, which is nicely nestled in the mid part of the board. And then as you move further back, it sort of gets spread out across the width of the board. So the concave is getting more, it stays the same depth, but it gets spread across to the rails a little bit more. And just in front of the channels, again, the concave is still there. Then as you enter back a bit, the channels sort of take over where the concave left off. So talking about the channels at the back of the board. Now the reason I find this quite an interesting shape to look at is really how well the channels have been put into the board. 
sometimes we've seen SUPs with channels and they are literally just gouged out the bottom with routers glassed and put on and there doesn't really seem to be any thought about why they're there, how deep they should be and really if they're actually adding to the ride of the board at all. Starboard obviously have put quite a bit of effort into this channel shape more than like I just said some other brands I've seen with channels. The reason I can tell that is if you put the straight edge across the back of the board pretty much just behind the the side fins but in front of the front fin all of the channels are nicely beveled off to the outside edge of the board so at the center here you've got a V starting to come up so you've got your concave and your V's coming up and then from this point here this goes down to this channel and this goes down to this channel so it's forcing water to the edge of the channel and then back around the fin which is obviously going to help you produce the drive they talk about the speed acceleration in the catalog that's where that sort of side of it is coming in now these parts of the channels are here on the side edges they're also being forced off towards the rail of the board but then at the side of the boards around the side fins here it's pretty much a flat so there's no channel there and then right at the back of the board behind the center fin the v sort of gets raised up and it's actually got a sort of V throughout the whole of the board so there's no flat edge there it's, it's rocking from from left to right so this is how I understand and I'm going to try and interpret you what's going on underneath with the water the water's been forced down the middle of the board then it comes to the channels if you're running down a wave and you're trimming down the line to try and generate speed it's been forced into the side the, the lower parts of the channel and then squeezed out the back as quick as possible. If you're then bottom turning and then putting real amount of power onto your back leg, it's gonna be forcing the water even more so into those channels, into whichever edge you're forcing your turn into and then helping you get grip and drive to project back up the face or to come round to do a top turn. And by then bringing the V up in the center of the board, it makes the transitions from rail to rail turns really easy because the water knows where to go. It's not stuck in the middle section and it can easily be parted left or right, whichever way is easiest for it to go. Keeping a look at the bottom of the board, let's look at the fins. They all come with FCS2 fin boxes this year and a lot of other brands are following suit with that, but they're all FCS standard fins that do fit in it so you can opt to get FCS2 system or you can run it as an FCS1 system so it's giving you great versatility there the back fin is an absolute beauty it's a 4.7 inch balsa core bioresin fin the best small US box fin I have ever seen great shape nice and wide in the base not too swept back great for pivoting turns really helps obviously the sort of turning characteristics of this border as you would set it up the side fins, again, balsa core, bioresin outer, 4.5 inch, a little bit smaller than the center fin. A great fin setup that really suits the board. Having the US box is really handy on this size board because then if you're a slightly heavier rider or you've got more of a heavier back foot pressure, you can put your fin further back to give you a bit more drive or you want to pivot around the board a bit more, make it a bit whippier on the turns, or you can knock the fin further forward to help you do that. So I hope you bared with me through that super geeky stuff and it sort of made sense. Let's move on to the more fun stuff, which is what does it paddle like on the water, on the flat, paddling out and catching and riding waves. So standing on the board and paddling out back, this board, the 710 by 29 has a great thing going. It feels incredibly stable to stand on for its size. Seven foot 10 long boards, they're getting into the super small realm of length of boards but it's not a super small board. This is 104 liters by 29 wide. And I know some of you are going, it is a small board for me. I weigh 95 kilos. Okay, it's a smaller board, but let's bear in mind this in comparison to all of the other shapes, they do feel very stable for the length of their boards. So seven foot 10, 29 wide, a lot of stability there. It's gotta be to do with a nice big flat deck. And I think the few of the hones and the tunes that are done with the rails really make a difference. And maybe even the bottom shape makes a slight difference when you're going at the slow speeds as well. Paddling out and popping over waves, it's one of the easiest boards on test and it's one of the smallest boards that we've been testing. It's a little bit wider than some other pro shapes on the market up at the shoulders there. So it gives you that extra stability when you pop over the wave. And I think because it's quite light, you can just push it out over anything. Paddling along, it has got a nice amount of glide. It's definitely not the slowest board, 
by far that we've been testing. We've been testing a lot of pro shape boards now, and this is one of the fastest pro shapes to paddle. The only thing that you might find that you might want to be aware of if you are jumping onto this board as your sort of step up from your intermediate board, your back fin, because it comes with a really nice performance shape fin, you might find that when you're tracking, it starts to skew off a little bit. If you find that you're doing that when you're paddling in, maybe put the back fin a little bit. We did put a few people on it who have, are easily ready for this size board, and they did find it a little bit harder to paddle in on a wave in a straight line. But bear in mind, if it's offshore winds, that sort of thing, really affects how the board paddles in so it does paddle in all right but maybe when you first start off you might want to put the fin back a bit or put a slightly bigger center fin in to give you the extra straight line tracking if you're used to that sort of style paddling on a smaller boards no problem at all it's going to catch pretty much every wave possible and it's got a nice amount of glide for its size now when it comes to riding the board on a wave, now we've tested this in three or four different types of waves over four or five sessions on the smaller, slacker, mushier waves, it performs really well and we wouldn't expect it not to perform well because it's got super short nose, everything is geared up for speed and generating as much power and flow as possible and it does rip around on the turns really easy. Now that's what you'd expect of a small board. They usually work well in small waves because there's less board to move around easier to generate speed. When it comes to riding faster waves, especially with windier offshores, short boards, especially this one with a bit of width, can be a bit of a handful. And if we couple all of that with putting a lighter rider on it like Will at sort of 65 kilos, the board really shouldn't feel very good and it should feel really corky and a bit out of control. But 104 liters, this board can really handle itself in faster, bigger waves. Now that's got to be to do with the rail shape and it's also got to be to do with the channels. They give you so much grip on the wave face, especially during a fast bottom turn. There isn't one point you feel that the board is out of control or going to spin out or just too lively for that wave. And that's a big difference in sort of, I'm not going to say this is full carbon board because it's not, but in the carbon sense of the board. I'm going to put my hand up and say a couple years ago, I really did not like the starboard full on performance pro shapes in their full-on carbon because they did feel a little bit rigid and I'm used to surfing more custom shaped boards with a bit of give to them. This board has an amazing feel on the water and to be honest that was the biggest thing which I felt about over all of the rail shapes and the bottom design is the actual feel of the board. The response of the board in the bottom turn and the top turn was really really great and I'm really happy I've surfed it and felt the new way these blue carbons have been surfing. Yes, we've been testing the 10 foot starboard longboard, but it's a completely different sort of feel to a pro shape and what you'd expect to force on a turn and how you would expect the board to feel. So it's a very planted and stable board, happy to hold you to the face on the super fast waves. You'll also see a lot of the starboard riders. There's been a lot of video footage of them surfing these boards in Chopu and Tahiti on those fast barreling faces. And I think those channels really make a difference to giving you extra drive and grip on a wave like that. And also in the real world, we can feel that difference on those faster waves that we're gonna be surfing as well. When it comes to producing top turns and hacks, because of the channel shape, this board is a gouger. It wants to force turn, force water out the back and look as dramatic as possible. It's not the sort of skippy, slidey, skatey feel as you would find on some other brands that have a flatter tail here. So it's pretty much been designed for the guys and girls the pros on starboard, they all surf that way, very gougy, very dramatic, and very inspirational, and that is what this board is geared up to. So who do we think this board is best suited for? Ability, weight range, and wave uses. Well, ability, it's a very easy to board surf. Yes, I'm talking about the 710, but you can put this across the whole range. Super stable, it's gonna easily accept good intermediate surfers, moving on to their advanced style surfing. Somebody wants to do faster turns, maybe in the more critical section, and just produce more speed down a wave and just trying to take their sub surfing up a gear. Weight wise, starboard recommend 65 to 85 kilograms. Yes, that's gonna be possible. The dream weight, or probably the realistic weight that most of us will be achieving to go on this board will probably be 70 to 80 kilograms. If you're in that weight bracket and you are an intermediate surfer, moving into advanced surfing, this is a very nice stable board to look at. Wave ranges, everything. 
everything from one foot mush to triple overhead super fast faces obviously the bigger the bigger the bigger the board gets and the bigger the bigger the waves get it is going to be more of a handful but they do handle very well for their size on super fast waves so to finish off with pros and cons and value for money well the pro it has evolved into a very user-friendly performance shape this year the 2019 boards the shorter nose way quicker to come around the rails and channels on the bottom and the fin setup very well thought out really well done and very happy for a lot of people to ride it and cons i've got absolutely nothing against the boards and their shapes but i do think there is a bit of a gap in the range of boards between the 83 and the 810 because you've got a gap there from 110 liters to 131 and there's quite a few riders in that 85 90 kilo size bracket that might find they're missing a board that's right for them and value for money, this board here, the Blue Carbon, retails at £2,299. Yes, I think I've just seen a few people fall off their chairs, but they do make this board in the Starlight construction as well, which is £1,249. And it's only just over a kilo and a little bit heavier than this board. So the Blue Carbon, if you've got the money, yes, go for it. It's a fantastic board. But if you haven't, the Starlight, cheaper construction is really worth looking at. Hope you found that sock board review interesting and informative. There'll be a sock board pro video about this board, comparing it to all the other pro shapes we've tested and some other ones that we've also used in the last year. So look out for that. But until next time, we'll see you on sock at YouTube or sock pro. Thank you very much.